Hi everyone, um, it seems I'm doing a lot of haul videos at the moment, the reason for that is everywhere's got great discounts. This is a big shout out to the lovely audience members in the United Kingdom. Hobbycraft, that is our big box craft store in the UK, seem to be getting rid of Dela and Rowney paints, or they're at least reducing the range they sell. I know this for two reasons. One, in my local store, one of the staff told me a few months ago there'd been some dispute with the company and they decided they didn't want to stock their paints anymore. And I went in today, it's Christmas Eve um, in the UK, 24th of December at the moment, and I went in and they have bargain bins right by the door full of Dela and Rowney paints. This means that their professional acrylic, Kryla, in the 75mm tube I think that is um, yeah 75 mil tubes are two pounds a tube regardless of which series they're five mil professional watercolor two pounds regardless of series and they're professional gouache two pounds regardless of series needless to say because obviously I use these in my professional work Kryler is my preferred acrylic I don't really use their watercolor that much but I often get asked to you know compare other products with it I do use their gouache because I've got no brand loyalty with gouache uh, the only paint I would say I've got any brand loyalty to at all is watercolor because I know Winter and Newton's watercolors really well and that just means that I know what I can do with them I know how to achieve effects with them you know when you just kind of you know them inside out and I know what I can get away with I don't use these enough to know what their pigment loads are off by heart and one of the things I find with watercolour for me and the way I use them is I need to know the paints so I kind of have in my head well I, I know that if I'm mixing those colours that one's got a higher pigment load than that one and I just know the Winsor & Newton ones. Now I've recently tried some Daniel Smith watercolours um, which are the only other professional watercolour I've really tried properly. Um, because someone gave me some for Christmas. Uh, thank you, Kathleen. Um, I don't know if I've put the video up about that yet. Um, I'm out of sync with what I've uploaded and what I haven't. And so I got a stack of those and I got some gouache. I'll just show you what I got, but I'm going to tell you first what the saving was. I spent £68 buying 34 tubes of paint. I have just costed them at full price on Amazon, and this haul would have cost me £241.48 at full price, which is a saving of 72%. So, people in the UK, if you like Dale and Rowney paints, get your asses to Hobbycraft bloody quickly, because I doubt they'll have a lot of stock left in the new year. I have no affiliation to Hobbycraft at all. I'm not even in their bloody loyalty scheme. But I will tell you, this is the best deal on paint I have seen in years. Now let me go through what I got hold of today, and I'll kind of do it by colour family. So I got some uh, Benzamidazoline Orange 5HG, which is a single pigment colour, PO62. It is a Series C colour, and it's a fairly insipid orange, to be honest. It's not an orange I really like, but I thought, you know, I'm paying £2 for it. And I find I can make acrylic last a long time. I store it correctly. It doesn't get too hot, too cold, etc, etc. Golden Yellow, Series B colour. It's a mixture of Aralide Yellow GX, which is PY73, and PO62, same as the last tube. So it's a convenience mix, and it's just a little bit more yellow. The problem I find with this camera is it doesn't pick up oranges that accurately. It kind of misinterprets them. I got a gold ochre, which is a mix of nickel dioxazine yellow, PY153, and Venetian red, pigment red 101. So kind of a faux gold ochre. And that's got a slight bit of separation to it. I can already see with that swirly line. But um, it's a nice colour. It's a really useful alternative to yellow ochre. I got uh, bismuth yellow, which is one of those colours I never really quite know what to do with. It's bismuth vanadate, PY184, and I thought if I have it in acrylic, maybe I'll find a use. Um, I use it in watercolour very, very rarely. I got flesh tint, which is one of those kind of insipid mixes. I use this like titanium buff, to be honest. It's yellow iron oxide, PY42, Indian red, pigment red 101, and titanium white, PY6. 
Why is Indian Red P PR101 and the other tube said Venetian Red PR101? The answer is the size of the particles when they grind it. That's what makes the difference. So that's a kind of, again, separated. Um, that's a kind of similar to Titanium Buff. And the idea of these flesh tints is that you take these and you add to them um, burnt umber, and that gives you your various skin tones. Um, you can use this like Titanium Buff or Titan Buff from Golden as an alternative to white in portrait painting. And one of my kind of New Year's resolutions is I want to start painting people and animals again, because I don't do that much. I got Cad Scarlet, which is a mix of Cad Red, PR108, and Cad Orange, PO20, so a very, very warm red. Again, a light separation, but nothing I can't cope with there. I've got Pyrol Scarlet. I usually use Pyrol Red. So Pyrol Scarlet is Pyrol Scarlet PR225, which is the warmer version in the Pyrol series. And I like that because it's a transparent red. It doesn't granulate in watercolour and it's quite useful um, in acrylic. There was some medium in the box of, of these that had leaked. So that's why I'm a little bit gooey as I go through these. Um, Quinacridone Yellow Red, which is Pigment Red 209, which is a very warm um Yeah, there's a little bit of light separation on that one as well, which is a warmer kind of... Quinacrino reds are very, very, very cool, but that's a slightly warmer version of them. Um, I'll go through the other Quinacridones. Quinacridone Deep Purple, which is pigment red 122. Again, a typical kind of Quinacridone, almost violent um, purple there. Really useful colour when you're trying to get a nice sunset going. Uh, permanent Violet, which is a mix of Quin Magenta and Dioxazine Violet, so just a convenience mix, but it makes a bit of a difference. Um, it's not as bland as Dioxazine, it's cheaper as well, because Dioxazine Violet is a really expensive pigment, so it cheapens it down a bit. Venetian Red, Pigment Red 101, which is gorgeous, deep mineral red. Rich transparent red oxide. Um, I use various red oxides. I love them. Um, they're all sort of very similar. It's another great colour. And then into the blues. Thalo turquoise, which is thalo blue and thalo green. So PB15 and PG7. So it's not true thalo turquoise. Which, there is a thalo turquoise dye. This is a mixture of dyes that achieve that. Um, I'll do the other green. I've got a rowney emerald, which is titanium white, phthalo green, and aralide yellow. So an opaque minty white, minty green. Um, often useful for grasses. Phthalo blue green shade, PB15. The stock cool blue that we all use. I've also got phthalo blue red shade, which is also PB15. Um, the warmer version. No one really uses that, but I find sometimes if you mix the two together, it's nice. Ultramarine Blue Green Shade, which I'm actually starting to love in watercolour. It's just a slightly cooler version, still a warm red. Makes a nice grey, just the green shade. Ultramarine Violet, Pigment Violet 15, one of my favourite purples. Look at that. It's beautiful, it's opaque, it's got a granularity to it in watercolour, and I just really enjoy it. And primary cyan, uh, which is thalo blue and thalo green mixed again, but in a particular proportion that gives something similar to a process colour. Um, that really is all of the acrylics. Um, the gouaches, I got yellow green, which is, does it tell us what pigments these are? problem with gouaches is because they're not intended to last, because I've done a video, if you watch my gouache 101, which I'll link in the iCards, Gouaches are not meant to last, so they don't often give pigment information. Beautiful, beautiful yellow green. And I've got yellow green in there um, in watercolour and so on. And then I wanted the process colours, so I got process yellow, magenta, and cyan because it's often easier to mix in the CMYK universe when you're painting in gouache, which is also in my Gouache 101. I also in, picked up this Pitt um, Artist Marker, as I haven't tried those, this was also £2, so that's why it's in this tray, it's my sort of bargain bin haul um, that I wanted to cover. So now the watercolours, which are the bits that most of you are probably interested in. I got Perylene Red, which is um, probably neat Perylene Red, Pigment Red 179, so neat Perylene Red. I got Vivid Green, which is 
pigment yellow 138 and pigment green 7, so a convenience mix, but it's a pretty vivid, as it says, quite a bright green. Um, not sure what I'd do with it yet. Hooker's Green Light, which is exactly PG7, PY153, exactly what you kind of expect, but it's the toned down version of it. Um, I don't really use a Hooker's Light very often, but it means you don't have to add quite so much water or any yellow to it to get more realistic colours. Tube greens are always unrealistic. Never use a tube green without mixing. Viridian, which is uh, true Viridian, PG18, chromium hydroxide. Gorgeous colour. Yellows, I got Gamboge Hue, which is PY3, PY153. And if you watch my Gamboge video, which I'll link in the iCards, You'll learn about why there's so many Gamboge combinations out there and which ones I prefer. And that was not too bad. It hasn't got that brown edge that the Windsor & Newton ones got. Um, I use transparent yellow instead of Gamboge because it doesn't have the brown. Indian yellow, which I love, pigment yellow 153. So again, just a uh, synthetic dye. I mean, Indian yellow should be called... That uh, is a very good Indian yellow. It's very orange. Um, Indian yellow should be called Indian yellow hue because it is always fake because the real thing is cow piss. Um, phthalo blue green shade because I'll always use that. I mean, even if these end up in a set that I use, you know, just a palette for on plein air in the summer because on plein air work is sketch. You don't paint proper pictures out there. Well, I don't anyway. Um, it's still good. Quinn magenta, which is pigment red 122 quite insane kind of colour. Really, really rich, beautiful magenta. And these, I think, are probably going to go into a palette. I don't usually put sort of non Windsor & Newton ones into my main palettes, but I did it with my Daniel Smith. So I did it with these Pigment Red 170, Carmine. Some of these I can tell are pressurised slightly, which is not really a problem. It doesn't necessarily mean they've gone off. It often just means that they were filled at one temperature and have been stored slightly warmer. Permanent rose, which should be, yeah, PB19. Um, I get through tons of that. It's my favourite cool red. Uh, I don't use alizarin crimson. I use permanent rose. So these are all really sticky tubes because there was this leaked um, tinting medium. And I think, um, yeah, one, one or two of these tubes actually took quite a lot of that. So... Uh, 68 quid's worth of paint, but actually worth £241. So if you're in the UK and you have a hobby craft near you and you like acrylic watercolour or gouache or Dodo and Rowney paints in general, go there in the next couple of days. You are going to get yourself some bargains. These in my local store were literally right inside the door. There were like five or six bargain bins that had got reduced paints, reduced pens and so on. And there was and also the Daily Ramani oils were also two pounds, but I don't paint oil, so I didn't buy any. There were oils and acrylics and watercolours and gouache and some media like the pearlescent tinting medium from the System 3 acrylic range was in there. I didn't see any System 3 paints, the, the high end student range or graduate or any of the others. I only saw the professional in all media, so acry acrylic, gouache, watercolour. Uh, and oil so that's what there is um, really 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 worth getting there everybody um, hopefully I'll post this in a couple of other videos today and tomorrow Christmas Day so that you'll know about this before Boxing Day and you can go and hit sales and and get hold of it and keep an eye on my channel in the coming week because I've got three possibly four giveaways each worth about 10 to 20 pounds or 15 to 25 dollars and I'll be shipping them anywhere in the world so get ready Thank you all very much. If you do celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah, have a good one.